Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and this week we have dynamic quizzes. We're going to be able to create quizzes based on multiple choice check boxes or text type questions. I'm going to transfer all that into an amazing dynamic quiz in which you can send out to anybody and get results. It's going to be a fantastic one of a kind training. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for joining us today. We've got a ton to show you. We've got a brand new application called Dynamic Quizzes. It's gonna let you add specific questions very easily on a click of a button, change the type of questions, whether it's multiple choice, check boxes, or a text type. Enter any question you want. Also, the ability to add a picture very seamlessly and very easily to the question. You can then choose a specific answer if it's a text or of course if it's a multiple choice you can choose multiple choice and then select which answer there are or if it's a check box you can also choose multiple answers and then put those answers in here so we've got a really lot to show you and the quiz sheet is then going to be transferred over also we can easily delete questions just by clicking the button going into the quiz sheet we can see here we have the ability to reset quizzes we can enter our name enter any name an id perhaps if we want to and then as we work through the quiz we can see that users have the option to have select specific options to a quiz for example if they're going to select the right answer we can go through the quiz we can also do multiple check boxes if the answers are multiple we also can have pictures displayed if we like and then of course at the end of the quiz we can also put in a text here if we have a text base answer that's really cool and then at the end we would get the results we have total quiz questions the correct answers incorrect and of course the score and the total quiz time so it's also timed it's really amazing that's what we're going to cover in this week how to create these amazing courses in next week this is going to be at least a part two i want to make sure you join up if you're watching this after check the links below i'll include part two as soon as i create that and i'll include the links in the description before if you like these videos please do subscribe i create brand new excel applications each and every week and show you amazing ways to use excel like you have never seen before so make sure you hit the subscribe and of course the notification icon that way you can get alerted each and every week to these brand new videos i create these for you free each and every week if you like us and you want to support the excel for freelancers i've got a brand new course an amazing subscription course where we're going to learn how to define design develop deploy your own excel applications we're going to go from concept to cash and it's going to be your path of profits i am going to show you how to create your own excel applications and not only that but how to sell them for passive income it's going to be a long course we're going to be developing an incredible accounting application within the course including inventory invoicing purchase orders chart of accounts general ledger including amazing dashboard sharing and sync feature along with customers and vendors it's going to be an incredible one-of-a-kind application the best accounting application you've ever seen and my goal is for you to create your own applications right along with me in these weekly lessons which are private so i'll include the link down below if you are interested in the mentorship program it is now open for early bird specials so go ahead and look for the links down below that is going to be something i'm really excited about it's already started so you want to get in early so that you can have a hand in what we create all right moving on to this week's training we've got a quiz this is going to be a great training this week we're going to show you all about how to create the questions here and how to create the quiz next week i'm going to show you how to send that quiz out to thousands of people on the click of a button and i'm going to show you how to get results of those quizzes into your excel application without even clicking a button so we've got a lot in both of these weeks make sure you check for both this week and next week because it's going to be a multi-part so i'm really excited to show it to you all right so this particular application so far is made up of three sheets we have the quiz we have the quiz sheet here which is the actual quiz where it's going to display the quiz we also have the results which are going to display the results and this is generally going to be hidden and when we send this out of course we're only going to have the quiz sheet we have the ability to reset a quiz and we also have the ability to enter a name an id 
and then go through the quiz starting it. That's what you people you set it out to be. We have some, of course, these columns were gonna all be hidden. We've got a custom background on this and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And we'll go over every step by step. So get your coffee, it's going to be a great training. You'll learn some brand new things you haven't learned before. Let's start out with this sheet right here, the dynamic, this is how we create our quizzes. So basically all user has to do to add a question is simply click the add a question button. And then of course, decide what type of question they want, multiple choice, checkbox or text. And then just enter the name here so we can say, what is your favorite color and then, and then of course we can add pictures so let's say we want to add a specific picture we can simply do that just add a picture here click OK and then it adds a picture to that question so now if we have red blue even if we only have three options that's fine too we don't need to use all five let's say we just have three and then we choose one we can simply choose the correct now if we were to change this question by changing it to so notice we can only click one, right? It erases, but what if we want the user to have multiple options? We change that to checkbox and now they can select more than one or all three or just two. So it's a really, really great, it's extremely, that's why we call this dynamic quizzes because dynamically you can create these. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you see the differences between, and of course if it's text, then they can just put in whatever color they want to. You would put in the right answer here. Once we have that here, let's go back to to the multiple check boxes here and we'll select uh, let's say green so now when we go into the quiz we don't we didn't require a name just yet so that's okay we'll just go through these and then continuing on we will answer them and you'll see just so we also have the text base where we enter a, let's just put Leo she's my favorite okay and then so we have now the we can choose which one we want so we notice there's only three options only three options are going to show up and then we just click finish. I should move this button up a little bit here. It's a little bit low. Okay, so now we click finish and our results are shown here. So we have all the results. We have a lot of choices, a lot of options with this. So we're gonna customize that. All right, so how do we do that? Well, let's start out with the add the picture here. You notice we have the ability to add a picture here, just like that. And so that is a browse for picture button. So let's go into the developer and see just how we did that. We also have the quiz name here. That's going to be dynamic. So if we change it here, it's going to automatically change here in the name here. And we also have the uh, share results so we can share the results or so not to. Now I'm going to set that up next week and then send results. These two are going to be used next week, but I wanted to make sure we have a placement. So how do we add a picture? Well, we start out that within the VBA editor. If we right click the group, we're not going to be able to define the macro, but if we right click any item inside the group and we right click and we click assign macro, we can see what macro has been assigned and it's called question add pick. So let's locate that by clicking edit. We can quickly go into and locate that macro. We can also use alt F11 to get into the VBA. So we have a module called create quiz macros. Now the important thing is when we click this, we need to know what row we're on. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look. Of course, if you're familiar, we always want to keep track of what we're, what row we're on. Now this one's a little more tricky because look, I have multiple rows. Each question contains five rows. But what I want is the first row. I want 16. I want 11 when I click here and I want six when I click here. I want the first row in the set. How do I get that? For example, for example, let's say I click here. How am I going to get 31? Well, the best way to do that, even though these are merged and center, but not all of them are, but I want, for example, if I click here, I need to know it's 26. I don't want the, I don't want the row that we've selected. I want the first row because that's going to tell me what question number there is. So how do I get that? Well, if the user selects this one, 30, right? Row 30. I want the first one in the series. I want 26. So how do I get that? Well, I subtract four. What if I select 29 and I still want 26? I subtract three. So if we know how many we need to subtract, all we need to do is get the number three or get the number four. I've placed that number right here. If we take a look at that, we know how many subtract because we just have to look in column K. So it's very, very important when we're doing things with these questions, we need to know what the initial row is, what the top row, six, or 11 
or 16 or 21 that's what i need okay so no matter what row they've select in the series i need to get that first row that's very important that's the selected question row because we need that so to do that i'll need to subtract four so for example if the user selects 30 i need to get to 26. the only way to do that is subtract four as long as that four is here i know how many to subtract if they select here i know how many to subtract three so that is how we do that in the code so we're going to go over that in just a moment so that means where is that that is located in b2 b excuse b5 b5 is locate that row that's very important so when we add a picture we need to know what row to add that picture to when we select here what row are we adding we're adding it to six when we select here we add a picture what row are we adding it we're adding it to 11 okay so keep that in mind as we move through this macro okay into the macro we go we're going to mention the picture file as a file dialog we need to open that picture up and the way to do that is to define it as a file dialog next up the question row remember we just discussed that in b5 i need to know the row of the question that's very very critical that is the first row so we need to define that as long and also the question number that is going to be in d column d for example this d6 would be question number one d11 would be question number two and so on so that's how we know we know the questions in column d the question numbers in column d and we know that the row is always going to be in b5 so that's going to help us determine what the question number is we'll need both of those all right moving along the path is the full path of that picture when we browse for it that'll need the question number we're going to define in the question row we're going to define in b5 that is going to tell us our question row again question number is in column d we just went over that and then the question row as long as we have the question row we're fine and we can determine the question number set the picture file this is going to open our file dialog application file dialog remember this is a file picker if we wanted a folder we would add in folder picker so let's keep that in mind with then once we've opened it up we need to do some things with it with the picture file we're going to set the title as select a picture for the question it's not required but and then of course we're going to add in the filter we only want picture file filters so that could be let me add the dot in here i need i need that for everyone it's important otherwise it could have issues dot png dot bm okay now we got all the dots dot jpg dot jpeg gif png gif we got gif twice we don't need that okay so and so that is how we do it and we just want one with there's if they do not make a selection we go to no selection that'll just cancel out of that next up the picture path is selected items so we're good on that next up the picture path we're going to set that whatever they've select that full path of that item the location of that picture is going to be set in this string variable picture path we've defined it as a string here up here just in case there's an error we want to first thing i want to do is i want to assign a name that's very important each question has one name and i want to send a specific name for each picture for example this picture has question pick one this one has question pick two there's only one picture per question and i want to make sure that name of that is very very specific and very defined you know not just a general name again quest pick three and so on and so for every question the only difference in the name of that picture is the last character which is the number of the question that makes it really easy to display and show and locate so we want to have defined names for that so what i want to do is i don't want to add a picture if for example i'm adding a new picture to this and i want to add a new picture i need to make sure that this one quest pick one is deleted before i add a new one i need to make sure that, that if it exists it's deleted so to do that we just need to run a few lines of code we're going to say on air resume next the reason we have this is because if it doesn't exist it'll could provide an error so dot shapes question picked and the question number delete it we're going to delete it if it exists because the user has selected a brand new one so next delete any picture for the existing question on air go to zero okay so now we're uh, completed with the error trapping with the pictures picture path with that picture in fact we should probably bring no selection all the way down here Be uh, it's down here already good i wanted to make sure that is just in case because if there's no selection it could provide an error this would be empty if there's no selection right 
Next up, we have to make sure that we're inserting the pictures based on the picture path. We're going to insert that, but there's a few things we want to do. I need to set the, the aspect ratio. I need to set the height. So we, need, we can do that with the following code. The first thing we want to do is lock the aspect ratio so it doesn't get all contorted. So we're going to set a height of 45. And then, of course, we need to name that picture. That's very important. All we've done is insert it, but we haven't named it yet. And I want to name it a very specific name, the question pick and then the question number. That's going to assign a name to that picture so that we can work with it in the future. We always know if we're working with question number one, we always know the name of that picture for question number one because it's always going to be quest pick one, always. All right, next up, now that we've created it, now that we've set the height and locked the aspect ratio, we need to place that picture. Where are we going to place it? We're going to be placing it in column G and the question row. I want to place it right here, column G and whatever row, so row six or something, and I'm just going to drop it a little bit. Notice how it's not right. If if this were to be right at the top, right? I don't want to write it at the top. I want it a few, I want to increment it down a little bit from the top. So I'll show you how to do that in the code. And I also don't want it right on G. I don't want it right on the column. I want to move it over to the right just a little bit. So we can do that with the following lines of code. The left, we're going to set it to G, and we're, this will sets it right at the top left of G and the question row. This is going to move it to the right increment left 30 is going to move it to the right. If we wanted to move it to the left, it would be negative 30. And then we're going to remove, we're going to insert a little bit below the top of the line. So increment top two, if of course we wanted to move it up, we would make it negative two. That's going to place our picture. So then we're good to go with the picture. That is how we place the picture. Now let's take a look at this. Notice that we have some dynamic buttons. As we select a specific row, notice these two buttons. Here, the ability to add a picture and delete a row is automatically going to change with that. So how do we do that? Well, that's on selection change. Remember, when we make a change to a specific selection of a cell, we want something to happen. We're not changing a cell, but we're changing the selection. As we select, things happen. How do we do that? Well, we've got two different buttons. Let's take a look at the names of these buttons. They're actually groups. We're going to call it Add Pick Button. That's the first one. And then the second one is called Delete Question Button. And there's two of them and they're just placed in different spots. So I'm going to show you how we did that. So back into the VBA editor we go, developer, and then Alt F11 will get you there as well as a shortcut. Now we're focused on the on sheet code. Remember, this is the create quiz. So now we're focused on something that's happening on the sheet itself. Why on the sheet? Because the user is actually making a selection change, not a change, right? This would be a change to one of the values, but actually a selection change. And also, we also have count large 10. Why do we have this? If we if we don't have that, when user selects all or large quantity, it could it will create an error. What kind of error? Just so in case you know, notice. Let's take a look at what kind of error that would show up. So you're familiar with when you get that error. If we select one, if I select one, it's going to create an error. It's going to call out of memory error. So when you don't have that, it does create an error. So simply by using this line of code, if target count large is greater than 10, why 10? Because we select a lot of cells sometimes, like in a merge cell, here we're selecting a lot of different cells, here we're selecting a lot of different cells. So when we use merge cells, we need to increase that above one because we want something to happen. All right, so that's why we have if count large is greater than 10, except it helps prevent errors. If the user makes a selection between D6 and I99, then we want something to happen. D6 here, all the way over to I, we want something to happen. Well, what do we want to happen? Well, I want to display these two buttons. So, we first we need to determine the row, deduct rows. Remember I said we need to determine how many rows to deduct? That number is located in column K. I need to know to deduct four, three, two, one, or zero based on the row they've selected because I need six. I need 11, I need 16, I need the top part of that question, the top row. To do that, we need to know how many rows to deduct. That row is located in K. So we're going to need to define that as a long here, whole number, and we can do that right here. Deduct row, of course, equals K and the target row, K and the target row. Now we need to know, we need to make sure the selected row contains a question. I don't, if, I, if the user selects outside of this, down here right we don't want we don't want the uh, this plus 
to add picture or this delete to show up if there's actually no question. Nothing happens here, but I want something to happen here. So how do we prevent that? Well, I need to, I'm going to look in column D, D36 in this case, or D31 or D26, and make sure that that actually contains a number. We need to know, make that, we need to know that for sure. So that code helps us. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if D in the target row minus the deduction rows, right, minus the four, three, two, one, or zero does not equal empty then we're going to show the buttons but what if it does equal empty then I want to hide both buttons right let's say we're here and we're showing the buttons and we select outside then what do we want to do hide the buttons actually it's going to when we select outside the initial table it's going to we could also hide them here but this way it kind of keeps it on the same if we're focused on that keeps the numbers the same but we're selecting outside the table now let's say we wanted to change it right here we wanted to, these buttons to disappear right when we select here all we would have to do is move this into this and and if right here here right here we would just move them right up here why this end if if i wanted to because that's the if that says if d and the rows are not empty right so there's two different nested end if statements here but it's okay the way it is it's fine just the way it is so what we want to do if they select outside the table outside this range here hide both of those buttons all right so assuming that they've actually selected a row that contains a question what do i want to do i want to set b5 the row to the target row minus the deduction rows let's go over that just one more time b5 of course is our selected question so if we if they select let's say we're going to select 10 right if they select row 10 how do we get this to six if they select row nine how do we get this to six again we just simply subtract whatever's here we're subtracting four three so you understand that's really important because i really need to know i really need to get that six up we're going to need to know that moving up all right so let's do that so we understand that if we select outside we're going to hide it so that is how we get it and let's see then what do we do we run this macro called show questions button that's going to actually display both of those buttons and let's go ahead and look at that and see what those are made of right click and click definition and that's going to take us to the create quiz macros right here create quiz macros and that is going to show those buttons these two buttons here show question buttons so the first thing we want to do is show the question row is long and we know where that question row is it's going to be in b5 if for some reason b5 is empty we need to exit the sub we cannot display these buttons in a specific row if b5 is empty right we need to know what row to display them on Okay, so moving on, assuming that B5 does contain a value, now we've assigned it to question row. So we can use these shapes at picture button. With it, we're going to position it, then we're going to display it. We're going to position it in H and the question row, then we're going to move it to the left, minus 22, and move it down from the top. We're going to make it visible, and then I'm going to bring it on top. This line of code will bring it above the pictures. Why is that? Well, if you notice, like on a bigger picture like this, we we want to make sure that the button, if the picture is really big, we want to make sure that the button appears above the picture. So the way to do that is you changing the Z order, MSO bring in front of text. So we want to make sure we do that. It brings it actually in front of any picture that's there. All right, next up. So with that's with the add picture button. What about the delete button? Pretty much the same thing there. We're going to accept this one's going to be in column J. I'm going to bring that down from the top two and then make it visible. We do need to make it visible on both of them. So that little code right there is going to make these column J or column G or H. Why is it H? And then we bring it over because if this is bigger, right, and I still put it in H, it's still going to show up in the same place because we're taking H and we're bringing it to the left. So that ensures that we it's in the right place all the time. See, it, even when we move the column over and we go back, it's still going to end up because it's based on column H, not based on column G. So if you want something to be placed on the left of a specific column, just place it in that column and then increment it over 22 or whatever to the left and you're going to get in the right place every single time. All right, so now we understand how to place those buttons. Let's take a look at the next macro. We have also the ability to add a question. This is a really cool feature. How do we add a specific question? Like when I click, let's delete this question here. Delete it. Are we sure we want to delete? Yes. 
But now I want to add a question and how do we do it? Click add a question and it adds a brand new question here. In the past we've used things like conditional formatting, but here there's nothing here. We don't add any conditional formatting. All I really need to do is take a specific question template, like a set of cells, and then paste it down here. All I need to do really is take that set of cells and put it somewhere off the screen. In that case, I've done it right here. It doesn't matter that the columns are different. That doesn't matter because we're not changing the columns, but I have everything here. And what is this called? This is a specific template that I've used that is gonna help me determine exactly when I paste it. All I need to do is right click, copy, through VBA, paste it down here, and then paste all, and that's gonna do it. And then all I need to do is set the next question number would be equal to this question plus one. That's all I really do in VBA, and then we're ready to go. You know, we're, we're good to go. We can add any type of text or questions we want, but that's how I do it in VBA. So let's take a look at that and see exactly how we did that in VBA. Going into the developer's mode, into the Visual Basic, now we have something we call add or remove questions. We have a module called add or remove questions. So right now what we're doing is we're adding a question. It's a very simple macro. We have the first available row. That's the important thing. I need to know when we're adding a question, I need to know what row to put it on. In this case, our first available row is 46. How do we get that 46? Well, I'm going to look at the first, the last row with the value. That's going to be 41. The last row is actually for even though this is a merge cell consider 41 it has contains the value so the next available one would be 41 plus 5 that's going to get us 46 so that's all we do so when we add a question it's going to get added right to row 46 just like that so let's take a look inside the macro the question template as a range that is the template that i just showed you in the upper right side that's going to be hidden to get that all we need to do is set that specific range to a1 through a h5 what is that that's right here just again a1 that's the same thing i just showed you a1 through a h5 all we're doing is setting this as a range then i'm going to copy this range and i'm going to paste it right in here that's all i'm going to do whatever the first it's a very very simple macro so the first available row again is the last row the last row with the value plus five now we have our first available row now we're ready to copy our range our question template range we're going to copy that then what we're going to do is we're going to paste it in the first available row. D in the first available row is where we're going to paste it. We're going to paste all. Great. That pastes it, but it doesn't add our formula. Then I need to add a formula. What do I mean by that? Well, I just, when I paste it in, when I copy and paste it in, if you'll see manually, right, we'll copy it again. Copy, even though it's already copied. Paste it here. It doesn't add the formula. I want a formula. There's nothing here. I need to get the question number in here. So to get the question number, we just add a formula to, in this case, D51 equals whatever the value is up there, plus one, and that's going to get us our next question. So we do just that, but in VBA. D in the first available row, that's our new question, equals, here's the formula, equals D in the first available row minus five. In fact, that is going to get us our last question in a row. Whatever this value is, plus one that puts a formula in there automatically and then i also want to select e that way to give the user the ability to add a question type right away it puts the focus right here in e and whatever they are so again let's go ahead and delete these rows the ones that we've created and we'll add delete it and then we're going to go over the delete macro in just a second okay so now we've deleted those to see very easily and uh, now let's add one just so we can look again to see add question. It's that simple Here's the formula we just added, selected this automatically. The user can select the question type. They can put in the question, a picture, and pretty much anything they want. So it's a really great feature. All right, deleting. How do we delete it? Well, in deleting manually, really what I want to do is pretty much select it, determine what row. What I want to do is here. I want to highlight the rows. I want to delete this row, but first I want to remove the picture. I want to make sure that these buttons don't get deleted. That's very important. So we want to make sure that those buttons are hidden first. If I delete this row just as is, these buttons are going to be deleted. We don't want that. So we need to make sure to hide the buttons first, delete the picture. That's important. And then what I want to do is any remaining, I want to take this. If I just delete this, it's going to create an error here because this, this formula is based on this. So I need to reset the formula for the next one. So we do just that in VBA. Let's take a walk through it. Delete questions, the macro that's been assigned to that button. Just take a look. Right click the groups, not going to show us the macro. 
right clicking at any specific object inside the group then right clicking assign macro and you'll see it's delete question that's the specific macro that's been assigned to this button into that selected question as long as selected question that's as long we need that because we need to know what question we also need to know what number the question is that's very important also the last question number the last row the question number and the question row is long all those values are long we're going to need to pull all those because we need to know what row to delete we need to know a lot of information and of course the picture shape as a shape i need to run a test to see if that picture is actually existing if it is deleted so the picture shape helps us determine if the shape exists so with sheet one we're focused here on sheet one the message box we want to make sure if message box are you sure you want to delete this question vb yes or no and then the title of that is delete question that gives us the title of that message box if their answer is no then exit the sub they're not going to continue any further if their answer is no that gives them a way to go out in case they press that button by mistake all right assuming they have pressed yes moving on if b5 equals empty then exit the sub right we need an actual row number to delete just to make sure although there's really no instances where b5 of course is our row number if it's empty we cannot also continue so assuming it's not empty, we can move it on. The selected question row equals B5. That's going to get us the question in which we're going to be deleting. The question number is in D in the question row. That tells us the question number. We'll need that. Now we're going to just delete a shape if it exists, the picture or shape. If there's a picture tied to that question, I want to delete that. But if there's not, it would keep cause an error. That's why we trapped it in on air resume next and on air to go zero. This is going to delete any pictures. And we know the name of that picture because it's always going to start with question picture and it's always going to have the selected question number. That's why we have to define what the number is here because we need to know what picture to delete because the picture name plus the question number makes up the exact picture name. And we're going to delete it if there's an existing photo. Next up, we also need to hide the delete button. And we also need to hide the picture button. Remember I said, if we don't hide those, we're going to delete those buttons. So with these two code, lines of code, those two buttons, the delete question button and the add pick button are both hidden but not deleted. Next up, we need to rename any pictures below, right? So if I if I delete this one, let's say question picture three, right? If I delete this row here, then I want to rename this because this one becomes three and this one becomes four and this one becomes five. So we need to rename the remaining pictures because I want everything organized properly. That's going to help us. So because question picture three no longer exists, so this becomes three instead of four. This becomes four instead of five and so on and so forth. So we need to do that as we run a little bit of a loop. So the last row to run that loop, Remember, it's only for pictures after it, not any pictures before it. So when we delete something in the middle, we need to rename everything else. So the first thing, I need to run a loop. Let's say we delete three. If we delete three, I need to rename everything from the last row on up. So that's what we have to do. And to do that, we need to get the last row and then run a loop. So we're gonna do just that. So the last row is we're going to the last row if as long as the last row is not the is not the selected question row what do i mean by that if the user is deleting the last row then there's really nothing beyond that we don't have to rename any pictures beyond that just delete the last row it's easy so we need to run a check if the last row in this case 36 is the one we're deleting we just need to delete that and move on but if the last row is something in the middle then we do need to rename these pictures so it's relatively simple we just need to run a few lines of code so assuming it's not the last row let's just put some if not the last if i'll put if the last question is not the question the question being deleted okay so for the question row we're going to keep track of which row we're on using question row equals the selected you know from whatever one we're deleting plus five to the last step five to the last step five so what does that mean that means let's say we're deleting this one we're, let's say that this is we're 16 but what i want i start renaming i want to start renaming from 21 all the way to 36 stepping five right i so that means what that means is 21 26 31 and 36 that's why we step five so we're going to skipping all the middle ones just going through the main ones 
Okay, so that's why we step five. The question number is always going to be in D in the question row. We're going to determine the question number. If picture exists, rename it to the number below. So first we need to see it if it exists. We're going to set the picture shape to shapes question pick and question number. We're going to set that picture. Now we can run a test. This is going to create an error if the picture doesn't exist. So that's important. We need to trap it if it doesn't exist. So now we can run a test. If the picture shape is nothing, then that means the picture exists. Then we can rename it. Then the picture name equals the question picture number minus one. Remember, we're resetting the picture name to one below it. We're resetting the name of the picture to the one below it. Again, so that means that question picture three becomes two, question picture four becomes three, and so on and so forth. So we're just renaming it to one below. We're going to run a loop. So we're running a loop for, for all that from the current one we're on below that to the last one. So that resets all the picture names. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now we're ready to delete the rows. So all we need to do is selected question row plus the selected question row plus four. What do I mean by that? If we're deleting three, that means we're going to delete 16 to 20 plus four. Plus. So this, remember, the selected is in B5. So we're going to say whatever 16 is plus four, delete those rows, delete them all. So we have that here. This will delete all the rows. And now we're going to run another test. If the last question does not equal the selected question, then D in the selected row plus 5 plus 1. What is that? What that means is if we're not deleting the last row, as long as we're not deleting the last row, if we're deleting the last row, we're not going to be adding any formulas below that. But if we're not deleting the last row, I need to add a formula. I need to update the formula because as soon as we delete this, it's going to create a it's going to create a error here so we need to update the formula in this one and that's exactly what this line of code does is updates the formula to d and the selected question minus five plus one all that does is it resets the formula to d 26 plus one or in this case d 21 plus one so it resets the formula so we can keep track of the question numbers okay moving on so that the selected question equals six in this case if the selected question row equals six then one set the first quiz on the first set to the first quiz on the first row why do we need that if the selected question row equals six then value of d6 equals one why is that if it's six right in this case that means they've deleted the first question that i there's no formula here in that case i just set it to the first one i just set it to number one that means if they've deleted this one and then this one this one is no longer a formula so it would be one here Okay, so keep that in mind, one. So they would change this to one and then the rest of the formulas would be fine. So that just serves in case the first question was deleted. All right, so that's how we delete the question and that comes up. Now we're good to go on all of our questions. We've covered adding questions, we've covered deleting questions, we've covered how to add pictures. So we've gone over just about all the features and functions. Let's move on to the quiz sheet because there's a lot of features in here I wanted to show you. The first thing is the most obvious, how do I get this really cool chalkboard background? Well, it's pretty simple into the page layout. Here we have delete background. I'll delete it and then show you how we do it. Back into page layout, right here, chalkboard background. I can just add that in. It's going to add a really cool chalkboard background. And then I, because it's dark, I've made all of this in white so we can clearly see it. These are going to be hidden. So we always want to hide those from the students. No students or who is ever taking your quizzes. You'll be able to hide those very easily. And then this is what they will be looking at. So they're going to be able to reset the quiz, add their name, and start the quiz. But for now, our purposes, we will show them. And I'll walk you through each one of these. So the first thing I have is some conditional formatting. Let's go over what we have here. This is going to show the start time, the current date, and the current time. So we know what their start time is. I've got to track the time that they take this quiz so we want to keep we always want to know the start time so as soon as they start this is going to be reset automatically to whatever the start time is that way as soon as they finish and then of course this is going to be the quiz results i'll show you that text as soon as there are results available this quiz will show you that this tracks our question number so as we move through the quiz our question number increases as we answer questions our question number increases this is the type of the question again this changes and how do we change that well we've indexed basically the quizzes and if we look here we have some named ranges under the formulas name manager I have just one called question numbers and if we edit that we will see that we have a really cool named range formula we've made a few changes 
because in this case, I want to use a dynamic named range, but there's something special about this. I'm using a dynamic name range, which is going to cover all the question numbers. But if I use count A, count A, that means counting all the values with Texas, they're not. There's only, in this case, there's only seven values here, correct? Seven values. But I need 40 rows. How do I get from six to 40? Well, actually, I've got a total of 35 rows. How do I get 35 rows? Well, I just need to multiply it times five, right? Because if we're starting at six and we go to 40, that's a total of 35, adding on the last one. So we're going to start it out at six. We're gonna count all of the cells with values and then we're gonna multiply it times five. Once we multiply that times five, it gives us that. If we were not to multiply it, it would just show seven rows. So it would start at six and go to 13. So that would not be sufficient. So we need to multiply that times five. That way we get all the rows and that way as we add to that it's going to also so when we tab over that we see that the dancing ants cover all the way from d6 over to d40 so that's going to really help us in our formulas and pull up our data so if i want to get this data basically i want to get the possible answers and i want to get the correct answers i want to get all of that based on the question so if we're on question number three i want the options here let's make this bold so we can clearly see it control b okay so if i want these answers just for question number three and i want to pull it from this one question number three i want to pull those answers i can use index and match on that so let's look at some, one of those formulas we're going to wrap it in if error in case there's no question there. If there's no question there, I want to make sure that there's no errors there. So as soon as they put in the question number three, then it's going to show. So how do we get that? Well, first of all, we're going to index. What are we indexing? H6 through 949. I guess they just used a large number there. H is where our possible answers are located. So that's what we're going to be indexing. And then we need to find the row. What row will we use to match? What are we matching? We're going to match the quiz numbers based on whatever is in B2. What is B2? B2 is our question number right here. We're going to match that if we want an exact match. And then we're going to add one. Why are we adding one on that? And that is because I want the second value in that match, the second value. This is the first value. England is the first one. France is the second, Germany is the third, the fourth. So if I match, if I'm matching three, it's gonna return this row, row 16. So in that way, I don't need to add anything. But if I want France, I need to add one. If I Germany, I wanna add two. So we find the match and then we add the rows so for example we're not adding anything in here but to, for france we're adding one germany we're adding two australia three so we're just we need to add one because we need the one below it. for the exact match we don't need to add anything so that adds the rows so this index match pulls basically all the values based on the question as soon as we change the question number those values change again so it automatically brings those answers directly from the possible answers because we're going to use that in our quiz. So that's really important. All right. So now we understand how we get now with this correct answers are the same thing, except we're pulling it from, in this case, column I because our answers are located in column. The correct answers are located in column I. So we need to pull that from column I. Same thing, same index match. We're also adding plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. So we're doing the same thing. Now, how do I, now what I want to do is I want to take these answers, I want to program them into the possible answers here. These are just option groups. So their answers, when they answer, they're going to be tied to this column here. So if I select Michelangelo, you see this changes to one. If I select Leonardo, this changes to two. So their answers are going to be tied to this D5 on an option, on an option. So D5, so if we right click and we, let me, that's off the screen, let me scroll up. So if we right click and we go to format control, we see that the cell link is D5. Same thing for this one. Same thing for this one. Same thing for this one. Now when we run through it, let's go through it one more. Now look, this one only has four options. You see there's nothing here, which is great. So this one, format control, again, D5, the last one, format control, D5. So they're all connected to D5. That way, our student answer, when they select, whatever option they select is gonna be located in here. So, next up, let me show you, let's reset this. I'm gonna reset, let's go back. I'm just gonna go through this. 
I'm gonna reset this because it's a little bit quicker in the macros here. We can just do it. That way we'll go back from the beginning and then I've got a macro that resets it. Reset quiz, just run that. So I wanted to show you something else. So put in the name, Fred, my favorite name. Start, okay, so you notice this is the option group we've been going over. So when there's five options, it's gonna show up. Next, let's choose an option. And then we'll see this checkboxes. Now, what about checkboxes? In this type of a question, they can actually select multiple answers. There might be more than one answer. You might, so in this case, I have tied a specific answer to this. So notice one, two, three, four, five, five possible. And those correspond to this. So if I right click this one, format control, this one's connected to D5. This one is connected to D6. D7, the, notice the cell links are different because this is multiple checkboxes. So this one, if they were select, so as we select those, they all go, they go to true. So they're connected. So the student answers are always gonna be in this column. So if it's an option type of question, it's only be, gonna be connected to D5. If it's checkboxes, it'll be individually based on D5. Then I can just simply compare this one so for example this would be have a wrong answer because only one so we can compare that all right so moving on so now we understand how they're connected to them and we understand how to get the options and we understand how to get the absence so we understand how we fill out this section here but how do we get the names notice the names if I slide this one over here you notice the name is no name connected to them because one for a reason I don't really like the font and I want to control the font so the name of it is actually connected to a cell notice this is B5 so this is connected they're actually not not connected this one this cell is b6 so the names are all connected to here and that the option one these are the this particular checkbox is turned on or off and it's always connected so I just hovered it right over the cell like that and lined it up accordingly and that's how we get this nice look and feel and I put a border around it if we format it we can see that the shape outline is white. I've given it a nice shape outline. If I wanted to go a thicker border, of course I could. You know, we could go a thicker border just to give it an idea of how you can change that shape. So I've given it a, a white border here, so we can see it. And let's. Uh, and if you want to align those, like I want, there's not quite. I want to hold the control down and select both of these. I don't want to align the top, so align the top. Now they're gonna line up a little bit better. It looks very, very nice. So based on this checkbox, so this is a checkbox. But what about if it's an option clicking next what it's going to do is it's going to hide all the check boxes now we're focused on again this is a different type of button this is an option and notice there's no text attached to it so that is an option different check boxes so within our macro we're basically hiding the check boxes or showing the check boxes or hiding the option based on this particular type and how do we get this this again is also an index match this is a multiple choice again we're indexing but this time what are we indexing we're going to index e6 through e49 why is that because that's where our type is our question type is located in e so in this case i need to index it based on the question so we're just pulling the information based on whatever column whether it's column e or whether it's the possible answers or whether it's the correct answers we're just pulling the data from this and bringing it into this because as we change the question everything else changes within here all right so now we understand how to get the type and now we understand that there's but what about this color look at this i wanted to show you one thing look at the look at the color of the cell it changes light green but what about this let me answer that and if we go to the next one all right this one this one has five options how do i get this light green color notice they're colored but based on so if we go next let's answer this if we go next and click next you'll see that now or oh, this one's got five too but what about one that's four look this one doesn't show up how do we do that well let's take a look at this cell i've got some conditional formatting and remember it's based on these values here but what if this is blank what if answer number five is blank in that case i don't want anything to show up here i want to use conditional formatting to not show any background color so let's look at that conditional formatting manage rules let's take a look at that if b9 equals zero in this case it does what do i want to do i want to 
go to the fill and I want to click no color. I don't want the color because there already is colors. So, but what if it does contain? Let's go ahead and reset this and show you when it does contain. Reset quiz, I'm gonna run this macro and then just enter a name. And then now, but it does. So look, when it B5 does contain, it looks, let's just go out of there so you don't get confused. Let's take, you see B5 has a color. It's got a light green color automatically. If we format this cell, right click, I'm gonna sc scroll up, right click, format the cell and we look at the fill we see that it's got a fill color it's got a fill color here this fill color is a little bit lighter than the green of the chalkboard so and that fill color is going to show up as long as there is a value in b9 as soon as the b9 is gone it's going to be hidden so that way for questions where there's no value at all then there's no option then in that case it nothing will show up in that light green so that's nice it only shows up for those types of fields so it's really really handy let me line that up perfect okay so so for example when we click next and we answer the question next and we go to the next question next and you'll see this one has four then it's completely gone so it's really nice it's really gives it a nice good and beautiful look all right, and now we understand how we get all the information, but how do we get a correct answer? I want to look for a correct answer. I want to know if it's correct on certain types of questions. For example, on multiple choice, I need to know what is the correct answer. For example, here the correct answer is France. How do we, I want to put that correct answer right here. How do I get that? Well, what I can do is I first want to check if the question is a multiple choice, if D2 equals multiple choice, then I want to index B5 through B9. What's B5 through B9? Is all the possible options. I want to index all the possible options. And I want to match the row. This U, this is the check mark. Why is it this U showing up? Because this is the check mark. If we change the font to wingdings, you'll see that that's a check mark. And that pulls itself, that pulls right from this here. Well, I just left it in the font, but you could change it. It's the same thing, but I wanted you to see it so it doesn't confuse you. So this check box, remember, is this U here, but it's based on the font wingdings. So it pulls in that. And and we can change the font back to just so you can see it. So they're all the same font. We can change it back to Calibri. So now it's changed. So the France has changed to now. So this is the correct answer. Okay, so how do we get France? How do we get the correct answer? Well, we're going to use index. Again, we're indexing all of the possible answers. But what row do we want? I want the row that matches this this little U with, it, with two dots over it, that check mark in the wingdings font. I want to match that. And I want to match it searching between C5 and C9. When it's found, I want to match it. And this is the row that we're going to use. This is the column we're going to use for index. So what that's going to do is going to return whatever the actual answer is. Next up, I want to determine what the student has answered. And here's the row, right? If they answer England, it's going to be one. If they answer France, it's going to be two. If they answer Germany, it's going to be three. So all we need to do is, again, index this. But now we don't need to match. We're just going to index this here and pull in whatever the, the third one is or the fourth one is, whatever they answer that. So this formula is even simpler. D2 equals multiple choice. Again, it's only from, we're going to index B5. Of course, we're going to index all the possible answers. D5, though, is now our row number. D5 is the row number. And then the column is the same column, which is B5. So now we have the right answer. So as soon as they change it, so the, their answer will show up here. So if they change this to Australia, this changes to Australia. So what now all I need to do in VBA is compare these two. And if it, they're equal, then it's a correct answer. If they're not, it's not. And also, I want to know if they have not emptied, answered it any yet. I want to check if they haven't answered. Here's a question. They haven't answered this. There's no value in here, correct? I want to count the number of blanks. If the number of blanks in here is five, that means they have not answered the question. So I want to make sure that they do, because if they haven't, when we go next, he says, please make sure to answer the question. When V VBA, I need to know if this is five in VBA, and I'll show you that soon. In that case, we are going to then tell them, hey, please answer the question. So as soon as they answer it, this changes to four. You see, now it contains a value. How do we do that? All we need to do is count the blank cells between D5 and D9 to do that. So that helps us run a check. The empty answers, of course, we want to make sure that, but I want to make sure that there is at least an answer 
that if they're all empty, if there's not at least one, so we want to make sure, and we'll base that on the number of answers too, so we can use that. And I'm going to show you that too. There's a lot to show you in this, but basically we want to also show you how to display the picture here. We're going to pull the picture up from the page and show you how to display it. And there's a lot more to show you on this. And of course, when they do answer it, we want to be able to show you all of the different possibilities in that test. And you'll notice as soon as we finish this, we're going to see that the quick, quick quiz, total quiz questions are six, correct answers are one, and then a score of 16 points. So it's not very good. So, and I spelled that wrong. Let me fix that. And we see here how we have the total results. So let's fix that. We have the total quiz time. Let's get rid of that E there. Okay. So now we see the total quiz. Where are we pulling this from? We're pulling this from the quiz results. How do we do that? In the VBA, so our VBA puts all the results here. It's going to have the question number, what type of question it was, what their, what the correct answer is, what their answer is, and we're going to run a comparison. The only one I got right in my case was me, which is sad, but that's life. So when it was submitted on, what if there was an ID or like a student ID, the total time it took them to take, the total number of questions, the total number of correct. How do we get that? All we need to do is count the number of trues here using count if so we can do that and the number of incorrect using count if again but this time we're counting false so we've got a lot we've got a lot there to going on so I'm going to show you how to do this I am also going to show you how to send this particular quiz to as many students as you want in next week's training we're going to add a few features we're going to add the a student sheet so we can email this to tons of students or contacts or whoever you want we are also going to have the ability to customize an email sent to them and i'm going to show you how to get the results so do not miss next week quiz we're also going to go into vba and show you exactly how of course you want to get a head start on this i'm going to include this full application in the downloads so be sure and to check that out also if you want hop on board to our mentorship program it is an early bird promotion now got a great program going on i'm going to teach you how to define design develop and deploy your own excel applications for passive income all right thanks so much for joining me and we'll see you next week where we continue this amazing dynamic quiz thanks so much